Awesome. Thank you, everyone, once again for joining us this morning. I do just want to make a quick note that we will be recording our presentation for anyone that wasn't able to make it but did want to receive a recording. So if for any reason you do not wish to have your camera on but for the recording, but your camera is currently on, I'll just give you guys a second to turn that off um, or feel free to show off your beautiful smiles in the recording. Uh, we love that too. And with that, we will get started. So good morning and welcome to our presentation, Thriving Together, Identifying and Preventing Burnout. My name is Rachel and today I'm presenting with Mew. We both work for the EIA program here at Goodwill Industries of Alberta. And once again, we are very glad and thankful that you decided to join us this morning in today's meeting. Here's the agenda for today's presentation. We'll start off by just taking a few minutes to quickly introduce Goodwill Industries of Alberta and our program, the Employer Inclusion Accelerator Program. Then we will watch a short animated video to help us begin thinking about what is burnout. Following the video, we will define what burnout is, discuss some of the signs of burnout, and talk about who may be vulnerable to experiencing burnout in the workplace. We will also offer some tips for leaders. At the end, we will leave some time for questions, so feel free to unmute yourself at the end and ask any questions. Or if you prefer, you can utilize the chat function here in the Teams meeting. And one of our coworkers, Michelle, has thankfully volunteered to help us out with the chat today. All right, let's talk a little bit about Goodwill Industries. So Goodwill Industries of Alberta is a local nonprofit organization which strengthens communities through the donation of gently used goods. Many people simply think of Goodwill as a secondhand store that we go to to shop and donate. However, it is so much more. Here at Goodwill, we utilize the profits from your donations to fund incredible programs to support persons with disabilities, support employers in creating a culture of inclusion in their workplaces, and reduce the amount of materials which are headed for the landfill through our sustainability efforts. The circular image that you see on the screen is our Goodwill life cycle, which shows you the positive impact Goodwill is making in our local communities. Starting from the orange arrow, when you donate or shop at our stores, you are helping change lives for the better. Goodwill uses those profits to offer individuals with disabilities the chance to enrich their lives through meaningful and sustainable employment. We help support persons with disabilities obtain the necessary skills for employment and offer them support during the job search process. One of my favorite things about the life cycle is that some of our initiatives offer employment opportunities and skills training to individuals, but at the same time, they also reduce the amount of materials headed for the landfill. For example, our Repair for Good program refurbishes old furniture that most likely would have ended up in the landfill, and the volunteers and employees who refurbish the furniture develop their carpentry skills, preparing them for further employment opportunities. We'll now chat a little bit about one of our programs here at Goodwill, the one that both you and I work for. Goodwill's Employer Inclusion Accelerator Program operates to support and educate employers on fostering inclusive workplaces. As I mentioned, Mew and I both work for the program and our titles are employer coaches, meaning that we form relationships and work with local employers to help support their unique needs and help them reach their inclusion goals. We are always happy to sit down and chat with you about where your organization is at and answer any questions regarding inclusion and accessibility. We offer a variety of services and they're all completely free of charge. Our services include one-on-one -on -one coaching for employers and training for your team of employees on a variety of topics, including mental health in the workplace. We also can help you connect with resources. As employer coaches, we are active in the community, whether that be at job fairs or networking events. We can help you connect with our partners as well as resources to access different government opportunities. We also offer hiring supports that can look like helping you with creating and editing job descriptions, pre-screening applicants, and promoting job postings within our networks. And we can support you with inclusive workplace assessments and education. Together, we create an individualized support plan to ensure that our support is targeted to your business's needs. I've included our email at the end of the presentation. As always, please feel free to contact us with any questions. That's why we're here and we're happy to help. We also wanted to take a second to highlight some of the employers that we are supporting. These are our clients that we are supporting in Edmonton currently. And then if we flip the slide, these are our clients in Calgary. 
These organizations have reported a better understanding of accommodation, accessibility, and inclusion, along with increased awareness of hiring and supporting employees with different needs. If you're ready to create an inclusive and thriving workplace, Goodwill EIA Employer Inclusion Accelerator Program is here to support you every step of the way. And with that, we'll now jump into today's Lunch and Learn topic of identifying and preventing burnout. We'll start with a short, cute animation that I think really cleverly illustrates the kinds of work factors that could lead someone to becoming increasingly burnt out. Let me know if you cannot hear the sound. <laughs> Awesome, I hope that you enjoyed that little video. We'll now return to the slide deck and continue on with some of the educational piece of today's Lunch and Learn. So, burnout has been defined as a response to chronic job stressors in the workplace that have not been well managed. And while burnout is not considered a mental illness, burnout is considered a mental health issue. The World Health Organization officially recognized burnout as a mental health issue in 2019. So with the definition, we know that burnout is a response to chronic job stressors that have not been well managed. But what is that response that we're talking about? Well, burnout is characterized by three dimensions. Feelings of energy, depletion and exhaustion. 
Exhaustion is a response to stressors, and it means that there is too much work for people to do well, and they are not recovering from trying to meet those demands. The second dimension, increased mental distance from one's job, leading to negativism or cynicism. Cynicism is a negative attitude about how the workplace is failing to address the chronic job stressors and a withdrawal from the job by doing the bare minimum rather than one's best. And the third dimension, reduce professional efficacy and sense of ineffectiveness. Ineffectiveness involves negative feelings about personal accomplishments on the job, including low self-esteem or depression, and not knowing how to get good advice or help. These three dimensions combine to create a sense of chronic exhaustion, alienation, and pessimism. Burnout reflects a mismatch between the employees and their jobs, where workplace conditions contribute to stress, hostility, and low engagement. So what are the signs of burnout to watch out for? This may not be an exhaustive list, but poor job performance, absenteeism, high turnover, and health problems are among some of the most common and clearest signs of burnout. When workers are consistently underperforming, missing work, leaving their jobs, or dealing with frequent illnesses, it's often because they are feeling overwhelmed, stressed, and exhausted. This state of burnout impacts their ability to do their job effectively, maintain good attendance, stay with the company, and keep healthy. Recognizing these signs can help address the underlying issues and improve the work environment. And with that, I will pass it over to Mew. Thank you, Rachel. So moving on, we will be talking about what causes burnout. What are the resource, like what are the sources of it? So the short answer is it really varies. Um, it could be like toxic social dynamics, like backstabbing, gossip, and even intimidation in the workplace, or it could be the workload and lack of support in the workplace, like the animation showed. Um, to know the causes of burnout and Let's try to answer this question instead. As Rachel mentioned, uh, burnout is due to the chronic job stressors that are not well managed. So what are the chronic job stressors that have not been well managed in your workplace? In other words, burnout is not an individual problem. It is actually a management problem. And the unit of analysis is usually the work group inside of the individual. And as a leader, it is essential to recognize that your own social encounters with team members carry extra weight. Beyond your impact on employees' work activities, leaders also have symbolic power as representatives uh, of workplace values. Your actions in modeling civility and respect throughout your social encounters can influence employees towards a better match on the community area of work life. And before we move into the tips part, here is a question for every leaders out here. Feel free to drop your answer in the chat, or if you don't feel comfortable, think about it, keep a note. And I would like to know what is the first question that come to you, come to your mind when you think of a team member experiencing burnout. And I will just have a few seconds for you here so that you can think about some of the questions that you have. And here's my guesses. Some of you may have these questions in your mind. What happened to the worker who is burned out? Do they need time off? Do they use employee assistance program to talk about their difficulties? Or do they use the company's benefits to see a therapist? Do your questions look similar to this as well? Yes, no? There's no right or wrong answers here. However, do you notice all these questions here? They share one thing in common. And let's read them again. Yeah, so I highlighted the subjects of all these questions in red. And you can see here, all these questions were framed in a way saying that the problem is located within the individual. Therefore, the solutions are aimed at that individual as well. And here is an example to better explain what I mean the solution are aimed at that individual. 
If you think of the mantra that has been around forever, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. This is a recognition of a gap, a mismatch between the job and the person. But it is also saying that this is the employee's problem. If the employee cannot do it, then go away. Don't be here. However, in the meantime, nothing is being raised about the space and the environment itself. Could the heat be turned down? Could we redesign the kitchen to be a better place? The heat bothers everyone, even with someone who has a higher tolerance. And this is still not a good ideal work environment. And do we, no matter if you are an employee or a leader, want to work in an environment where we need to think of ways to make things tolerable every single day? Probably not. You can suggest your employees to do all the self-care in the world, but at some level, if the stressors are the same, you're still going to have the same problem, regardless which employee that you are uh, handling with. So the first question matters because how you frame the question leads you to a different kind of answer. The questions about the individual are legit, but at the same time, let's also think about the workplace and the environment and try to locate the problems between the employees and the job. And here are some tips for leaders out here. And I would like to introduce you to a book called The Burnout Challenge, Managing People's Relationships with Their Jobs. It is written by two professors, Christina Maslash and Michael Leit Le Leiter. So I'm so sorry for my pronunciation. Um, but they are the world's leading burnout experts as they spent four decades in researching the mismatches between employees and their jobs. They identified six of those mismatches. Here they are. The first one, workload. In the animation, you can see we are so good at adding things. But how about subtracting? When we add things on someone's plate, do we also take something off at the same time? Is the workload reasonable? The second, the second one, control. Do we ask our employees for their ideas and feedback on various perspectives? and listen. And by listen means you understand their needs, you really consider their ideas, and if it's possible, when you choose not to adopt some feedback, explain why. By having an open and transparent communication, your employees will have the sense of control in the workplace. And do you know if your employees have this sense of control in the organization? And moving on, the third one, rewards. In your organization, do you only reward the success? How about the effort? Do we acknowledge the time and effort employee put in their work? And the fourth one, community. A sense of belonging and community at work is essential. Do your organization commit to diversity, inclusion, and equity? Do your employees feel welcomed and valued in the workplace? And fairness is the fifth one. Do you notice is there's any unconscious bias or even a conscious one in the workplace? Is there any systematic and systemic biases as well? Last but not least, values. Are the values of the employees and the organization aligned? As a leader, these are the six areas that you can start looking at today in the workplace to identify some mismatches that could lead to burnout. And as an employee, if you are experiencing burnout, these are some of the areas and factors you, you can keep an eye on. By identifying the mismatches, we can have a conversation with our employees or employers to talk about how we can move forward and together work on it. And moving on, let's talk about overachievers, as they are a higher, they have a higher risk of burnout. Um, high achievers, they are the individuals who often uh, respond to work stress by taking on more work, which can be further exacerbated by a workplace that consistently looks to the top performers to take on most of the toughest projects as well as additional tasks. 
And some strategies to balance these expectations include, first, avoid always requiring the overachievers to compensate for others. Sometimes we like to partner up the overachievers with someone who may not doing that good in the team. But at the same time, give your top performers the opportunity to work with colleagues that are at or near their level of competence will allow them to have you know, share uh, more balance sharing of a project's workload and pressures, as well as the opportunities to learn and grow together. And second, give high performers choices. Many leaders assume that high overachievers only want to work on the most demanding projects. In some cases, this may be true, but over time, this may move the employee further away from what they loved about their job in the first place. The leader may be surprised by which projects a high performer may actually enjoy working on. Lastly, watch out for the yes people. The overachiever may agree to every request because they feel that it is expected, and they may have a hard time saying no or underestimate the amount of time and energy that you will take. The employee who keeps agreeing to do that uh, one or more things may feel like they are never getting caught up, they're inadequate, and they are not living up to expectations. And all these, all these thoughts can be drivers of burnout. And remember, burnout is due to chronic stressors. It's okay to not be okay, regardless if you are an employee or even a leader. If you need someone to talk to, here are some here are some helplines that you can consider calling, uh, like mental health helpline from uh, AHS, the 211 if you want to get more resources, and if you have some suicidal ideation, uh, call 988. There will be some experts to help you out. And today, with the 30 minutes, we are only able to cover the basis of burnout. If you want someone to come in to talk about burnout in detail to the management team of your organization or even to the employees, feel free to reach out to us. And here's our email. And thank you so much for taking the time to learn about burnout today with us. Before we wrap up this uh, presentation, I'd like to ask, do you have any questions for us? I couldn't see the chat, so if no, um, this is the end of our presentation, and we are going to send out the PowerPoint and also the link of the video and the recording out soon. Thank you so much for joining us.